Hello, welcome to Tuesday Live. I am Omini Odun. On the 29th of May, precisely Friday, marked five years of the President Muhammad Buhari administration adjudged to have made productive impact in almost all facets of Nigeria. Tonight, we will look at gains, challenges, and projections of the Buhari administration from different dimensions. First, the Executive Order 10 of 2020 on financial autonomy signed into law by President Muhammad Buhari for state legislature and the judiciary. There are wide commendations for the Executive Order 10, which makes it mandatory for state governments in giving priority to allocation of judiciary of the judiciary and legislative arms of government, their annual budgets, are their doubts to the uniqueness of the executive order, especially with its implementation that will strengthen the state legislature and judiciary and make them more independent and accountable in line with the tenets of democracy as enshrined by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. What more to expect with the executive order? Answers and more after this background report by Benny Adams. Many years, the outcry for financial autonomy by the legislature, the judiciary, and the local government councils filled the air, owing to the fact that about 48% of the national cake shared every month goes to the states and local councils, with the governors collecting on behalf of all and disbursing as deemed fit. With this financial leverage, some state governors take control over the other arms of government. In most of the states in this country today, what you call houses of assembly are mere appendages of the state government. And um, the governors are directly in charge. They determine who the principal officers will be. They determine their tenure and their whims and caprices, even against the express will of majority of the members of the legislature who should constitute that membership. So this overbearing influence has always been there. And if you look at the flip side of it is the fact that this legislature, even when they decide not to... I've seen instances where salaries of... Uh, Certain legislators have been withheld for years for daring to stand the executive in the face. In furtherance to its determination towards deepening Nigeria's democratic institutions, the present administration had on June 8, 2018, assented to the fourth alteration bill of the 1999 constitution as amended, thereby granting financial autonomy to the state judiciaries and houses of assembly. Upon this signature, this grants full autonomy now to the judiciary at the state level and the Houses of Assembly. And to ensure implementation, President Mahmoud Wari inaugurated a presidential committee with a three-month period to conclude the assignment. The legislature, being the closest arm of government to the people and the judiciary, as hope of the common man, must both be seen to be sufficiently independent to fulfill their respective constitutional roles without any interference, let or hindrance. Legislative and judicial autonomy must prevail. While implementation took a snail speed dimension, 11 months down the line, President Buhari renews commitment with the signing of the Executive Order 10 of 2020, a gesture of Zavar's applaud. When you have an autonomous, a financially autonomous legislature that can be able to appropriate money to various committees of the state assembly to ensure that oversight is being carried out for the deliverance, deliverance of public goods. In my own view, the president has salvaged democracy. Because for you to have a distributed position of justice, you need to have a functional court system, you need to have a, a, court, a court system, a judiciary that is well funded, a judiciary that is well trained. You don't wait for the governor to approve to tell you uh, the amount he has available for your training before you send your, your, your the judges to for training or if you want to buy equipment. Now we are talking about development in technological in the technology in terms of virtual learning of court process. You need to invest more in technology. The accountant general of the federation shall by this order and others which may be issued by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice authorize the deduction from source money allocated to states from FAC in the case 
any state fails to release allocation meant for the state legislature and state judiciary in line with the financial autonomy granted by Section 121, Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, with a committee to determine and ascertain the revenue profile of the state with a view to making budget for each arm of the state government and other details. Guests on Tuesday Live will be discussing shortly. The Bagana report by Benny Adams sets the tone for the program tonight and is Tuesday Live. At some point, our phone lines will be open when we're through to you. Please, in making, raising your questions and making your concerns, please turn down the volume of the television set and we'll listen to you and address your concerns. Also, you can be part of the conversation tonight through our Twitter handle as Tuesday Live NTA. Well, my guests, in keeping with the social distancing policy, we are doing two studios in Abuja and via Skype or Zoom from Lagos. In the studio with me tonight, I have a lawyer, unionist, tutor, orator, writer, and politician, Kaiode Ajulo. Good to have you on this oh, live tonight. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. And then from the News 24 studio in Abuja too, we have Senior Special Assistant to the President on Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Itainang. Senator Itainang is also the Secretary of the Presidential Implementation Committee of Executive Order 10. Good to have you on the program tonight. And thank you. Right Honorable Mudashiru Ajayi Obasa, Speaker, Lagos State House of Assembly. He is the Chairman, Conference of Speakers of State Assemblies in Nigeria. He was a member of the Implementation Committee on Financial Autonomy of State Legislatures and Judiciary set up by President Muhammad Buhari. Good to have you on the program tonight. Okay. Gentlemen, we begin, but let me take my first shot to the News 24 studio with Senator Itainang. You are the Secretary of the Presidential Implementation Committee of this order. It takes effect from the 20th of May 2020. Where are we with it? Have we taken off? Let me, before I get I answer your question, congratulate His Excellency President Mohamed Buhari because this is one action that has attracted 99.9% .9 commendation from all Nigerians across all walks of life, from the Nigerian Bar Association, civil society, the Nigerian Labor Congress, the judiciary, the legislature at the federal and state level, and the international community. This is one action that has been commended as one of the biggest gifts that President Muhammad Buhari has given to, the, uh, to democracy. Congratulations, Mr. President. Now, where we are now is that the executive order has been uh, issued, signaling implementation. The committee, uh, at the instance of, his, of the learned attorney general of the Federation and Minister of Justice, uh, Malami Abubakar S.A.N., will be meeting in the next very few hours to look at, I mean, to take further steps on the field or boots on the ground. But so we are still, we are consulting, but we are ready because the executive order has clearly stated where, what we are to do and what is to be done. But let me assure that in doing what we are to do, we will be very conciliatory and, and amicable with, the, with their excellencies, the governors. Let me also assure that this is not a big stick on the executive. This is just a reminder to the executive and at the state level that there, are, there is one government at the state level, just as there is one government at the federal level. There is the executive arm of government, there is the legislative arm of government, there is the judicial arm of government, that three of them make what is called the government. And that what Mr. President has done in issuing this executive order is simply to say, please do unto the legislature in the state houses, the legislature at the state levels, and the judiciary at the federal level, 
the way I treat, the way at the federal level, I, as president and head of the executive and head of government, treat the judiciary at the federal level, the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, Federal High Court, National Industrial Court, and all the courts down the line. The way I treat the, how, the National Assembly, Senate House of Representatives, and all the apparatus, exactly the way. So please, if there is anything in the executive order that their excellencies, the respected governors, our brother, our brothers, see that it is contrary and different, and I repeat, contrary and different, from what is happening at the federal level. Please let them draw attention. I want to give assurance on behalf of the chairman and members of the committee, all the members of the committee, that, it, that the implementation as has commenced is going to come seamlessly and nobody will be injured. No arm of government will be injured. Thanks for your, Thanks for your Thank thoughts. You. Now, uh, Ajulo, reading through reactions from Nigerians for and against constitutionality of Executive Order 10. Can you update us? Well, like what the speaker, that's the Honorable Endan said, this would be, in my own, this is my opinion, that whatever the president has done, this singularly has shown the kind of president we have in Nigeria. For so, and if there's anything that anybody can claim to have contributed to democracy in Nigeria, to separation of power, to independence of all the arms, all the arms of government, organs of government, by stroke of pen, the president has called an asterisk. And like what he said too, I wonder and I still expect and I still want to see anybody that will come to say I have anything against it, except if you we can say on the hotel of selfish interest. It is expected that some people, particularly when you notice that what we are talking of is power, they may have one, one or two issues and we know that and Nigeria may seem to understand that. But when you talk of the constitutionality of the executive order, executive order has been there for as long as democracy has been from the time you look at the United States of America where we are copying us from, from the time of George Washington, this is what he has been doing and it may interest you that emancipation proclamation came come as a result of executive order. And that is why the Ambra Lincoln signed the executive order to say that the issue of slavery has to be totally abolished. And when you ask where, where, where can we say uh, Ambra Lincoln derives, derived its power then, it can come from the, from the constitution that proclaimed that American, by American constitution all men are equal. But that equality has not been put to play because there is slavery. But because of that executive order, which everybody call Emancipation Proclamation, by that stroke of pain, Abraham Lincoln made slavery a thing of the past in America. And that is the same thing President Amadou Buhari has done. Because for so long, since 1999, when we have our constitution, the separation of power, the independence, the financial autonomy of each arms of government, organs of government, has been there. But unfortunately, because when you looked at it very well, the constitution, all the participants of, our, of this constitution, they derive their power. For you to stand for election, to be governor, to be, to be legislator, to even be a judge, it has been provided in the constitution. And Part of it is we, when it comes to financial autonomy, for you to be for you to be independent has been there. But unfortunately, since 1990 date, there has been some issue. But the president, I, I, like I said, I'm not always his fan, but on this I stand by him, and I'm sure this is the way majority. He mentioned 999. I want to believe 100 percent of Nigeria they are with him. Those that may raise anything is maybe they just want to maybe we not want to negotiate that this power should not be given. So will you say the time wasted all this period? The time, while? It, it, well, well, I won't say that, but unfortunately we can we can't get back, that one back. But the president has done what is needful, and when you talked about the constitutionality of what he has done, there are a lot of predatory authority like this elephant group PLC against the, the national uh, security I'll, I'll advisor. I'll come to that. Let's not it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to Lagos, where the speaker is joining us, and. Uh, 
if, if, I want to just go straight. You were a member of, of the com committee that came up with the report which has activated this executive order. Are you fulfilled? Is it a dream come true? And are you excited that very soon you will be presiding over financial autonomy for the legislature in Lagos State, same for that other states of the Federation? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> thank you very much for bringing me on this uh, program. I want to tell you that we are very happy with the speakers and um, let me also use this medium to thank Mr. President as well and those um, <clears throat> gentlemen that contributed a lot to the success of this uh, uh, executive order 10. Well, as you observe, Lagos has been enjoying this uh, privilege for some time. Um, I mean, since uh, Ashwa Dibola met, you know, who actually signed what we call uh, autonomy bill in Lagos. But we are doing this to give support to other states, I uh, mean, the Houses of Assembly in Nigeria, and um, through them to other members of the Houses of Assembly, I mean, with the speakers, those who have contributed a lot to ensure that at the end of the day we gain this. But there's the importance of this executive order actually has to do with development of democracy in our country and threatening uh, democratic institutions. Well, it goes beyond the speakers and the members of our uh, members of various houses of assembly in Nigeria. But how are we going to develop democracy in Nigeria? And how are we going to bring benefits of democracy to our people in Nigeria? This is the most important thing. And as you um, straight to your question, we are very happy about this. But I just want to state this clearly, that it is not particularly about the members of us of Assembly, about the speakers, but about our country, about developing democracy in Nigeria. This is a major concern for all of us. And let me also state this clearly, that we, speakers, we have no intention of confronting the executive, I mean the governors. We have no intention of challenging them. But all we are saying is that there must be respect for the constitution of this country. It is clearly stated in the constitution what separation of power is all about. So observing that, and implementing it should not be a challenge to any arm of government. It's clearly stated in the Constitution that each arm has functions to perform the executive, legislature, and judiciary. So that must be respected by all head of arm of the government, um, as clearly stated in the Constitution. So we are saying we are happy, but this is not about us. It's all about people. It's all about democratic institutions. It's all about democracy in our country, and it's all about development in our country. Okay, now, if you are just joining us, our focus tonight is on Executive Order 10, on one plank. Part two of the program will be on five years of President Muhammad Buhari's administration in Nigeria. We will have a couple of reports dotting the landscape of the country. When we come back from the, with the report, we will sustain the conversation. First, we will be taking the report from Ibadan. The three arms of government as enshrined in the section 121 of section 3 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended are supposed to be independent of each other, but has not been the case. These, according to many observers, had been clogged in the wheel of progress of state judiciary and legislature. This supposed anomaly, according to many political analysts and stakeholders in the relevant arms, has been addressed through the signing of the Executive Order 10. The President says his administration will continue to do everything to strengthen the principle and practice of democracy and democratic governance in the country. The autonomy will enhance the performance of the judiciary, no doubt about that. Because a lot of things needs to be done, which without that autonomy and independence were or are impeded. Independence in terms of performance of our duty so that the executive will not come and say, this is what I want by way of a decision and that is what that judge should do. The new law seek to protect the state judiciary and the legislature from the deprivation of funds by the executive. 
our democracy is beginning to show the coloration of through separation of power as such we may begin to see a better legislative arm of government at the state level and we may begin to see a better uh, judiciary at the state level competing with what we have at the national level. By every arm of the government will be able to have autonomy. When they have autonomy to me, it's a freedom to work. And we give people freedom to work. You have actually given him the power to actually think out of the box. The two arms were therefore admonished to let the autonomy bear on their statutory functions. Accountability and transparency, that is our advice to them, to ensure that they maximize this opportunity, not to see it as an opportunity to cut away funds, but to make judicious use of whatever fund that is allocated to them and ensure it tells on democracy that we have embraced in Nigeria. The signing of the Order 10 is in accordance with the power vested on President Buhari under Section 5 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Let's take a listen to this report from Kaduna. The legislature, being the closest arm of government to the people and the judiciary, as hope of the common man, must both be seen to be sufficiently independent to perform their respective constitutional roles without any interference, let or hindrance. The order follows the report of a presidential committee set up to map out strategies for the implementation of the financial autonomy in accordance with the section 121, subsection 3 of the 1999 constitution as amended. With this development, fund meant for the state legislatures and judiciaries will be credited directly from source to their respective accounts. A development which some analysts believe will make the affected arms of government more vibrant and efficient in carrying out their constitutional roles. It's quite remarkable, you know, revolutionary, commendable, that President Buhari is bold enough to say let's apply the spirit and content of the constitution, that what is good for federal is good for the state. Because of the financial, non-financial autonomy of the State House of Assembly and the state judiciary, it makes it difficult for the state judiciary and the State House of Assembly to operate independent of the executive. And that is really giving them headache. They are not performing the way they are supposed to perform because they are afraid if they go beyond their bounds, they are not likely to get the financial support that they need to work, and they cannot work without finances. Reacting to perception in some quarters that financial autonomy for the state legislatures and judiciary could create room for possible misappropriation of funds, analysts say upholding the tenets of democracy is sacrosanct. Why should somebody hold your money when the money is supposed to be in your pocket? There's no need for that. I don't think that argument is tenable. Let the governors through the Accountant General of the Federation, allow the judiciary in the states and the legislature in the states to hold and disburse and use their money the way the law allows it. Nigerians like these analysts are hopeful that the full implementation of the Executive Order No. 10 will guarantee financial independence to the two arms of government which are key to democracy and service delivery. <music> Thank you for the report. Senator Itainang, listening to the reports from Ibado and Kaduna, what will you make of uh, structural, the structure in place to ensure smooth implementation of, implementation of this executive order? Let's say for the judiciary, it's already in place. Everything about implementing executive order 10 is highly procedural. Do we have the structure in place at the state levels to ensure a smooth implementation? For instance, at the national level, we have the National Assembly Service Commission, which is in place. How many states have 
State Assembly Service Commission. If this is not in place, how will this work? Thank you very much. I want to say that, um, to my knowledge, every state has a state House of Assembly Service Commission. That's number one. And they also have a clerk of the House of Assembly. That is in the Constitution also. And there is a structure. The state Assembly Service Commission are part of the budgeting process. Okay, in the recommendation of the committee, which has been accepted by Mr. President, and part of the order is that there'll be a budget, state judiciary budget committee. The state judiciary budget committee will make input as to what the budget of the judiciary will be. And then the, the, national, the House of Assembly will also have its own budget and will have it. And then they, they will all meet with the Commissioner for Finance, Accountant General of the states, and then the um, representative of, the, uh, of each tier of the court. Let, let's, let me uh, emphasize that it is not only the High Court of the state, it is the High Court, Magistrate Court and Customary Court. They will meet, prepare their budget, and then go to, together and submit it, and they will know what each arm of government needs. And the executive will also present what they need together. All of it will be added together, submitted, and the governor will take it, go and present to the House of Assembly, lay it together the budget of the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Lay it on the table of the House of Assembly, and it will be considered and passed. When it is passed, the, under the law, we also have um, a model law, and I want to say that by Elsa states, let me commend His Excellency the uh, Governor Dixon, the Emeritus Governor by Elsa. Um, he has signed a model, or one of the uh, is one of the states that signed. Adamawa State also, under Bindo, also signed. Now, the, when it is uh, 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 assented to, each arm of government gets their money when it, uh, it arrives from the Federation account, in addition, to, in addition to internally generated revenue. Now, let me also emphasize one thing, that under the executive order His Excellency Mr. President has issued, there should be, there has to be three years extraordinary allocation to the judiciary to develop. If you go to see the state of courts in the states, you will weep. If you go to the federal high court in a state, it looks as if you are in Abuja. When, when you go to the state high court, you will almost weep. You go to the magistrate court, you may see rodents around together with exhibits, you know, I mean the state magistrate court and customary court and district court, because they don't have their money. So that is why Mr. President has said, let there be extraordinary allocation for capital development of the court in the first three years of the implementation of the order. What this emphasizes is that if you come to the federal level, you'll see the standard of the, I'm sure Nigerians see the standard of the court of appeal. When, uh, when you go, and even when the election petition, um, uh, presidential elections were going on, and where there, it was issued live, it was uh, aired live, you saw the standard of the Court of Appeal. You see the standard of the Supreme Court. You see the standard of the Federal High Court, National Industrial Court, even the Magistrate Court, the, federal, the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory. Now, you don't have 20% of that in the states. So that is what Mr. President has said, look, give extraordinary attention to this. For the Houses of Assembly, you can only have one House of Assembly. And there is the other matters are provided for. Any of them that was not de well developed, you will have them developed because the Houses of Assembly had a political tool they had, they, they have, which perhaps en enabled them sometimes to get attention more of the governors. Now, I, 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 re I remember in my practice, for years that I have seen judges, I've seen a judge who was to go on medical attention at airport in Calabar. He had to be returned because he was called and told that the governor has not approved the file. He had to return. Another one was to go to for a conference. They just told him that the governor has not approved his trip. How? Therefore, what Mr. President has done is that cannot and has not happened at the federal level at all. 
His Excellency Mr. President, from President Obasanjo, President Yaradwa, President Jonathan, to President Obasanjo, His Excellency, to President uh, Yaradu, um, to President Buhari, none of them has treated the judiciary this way. But it is only President Buhari that has taken it a, a bolder step, 100% far, by saying, look, you were saying that the law is there. The constitution has been amended. I don't have the procedure for implementation. I now set out the procedure for implementation. What I'm saying is that Mr. President, I repeat again, has not made a new law, nothing different. It is simply giving the procedure live, verve, blood, and artery to the section 231, subsection 3 of the Constitution as amended. So all the structures are there, and there is nothing that is going to hamper the implementation at that level. All we will be doing as the uh, midwife will be very, very gently, diplomatically, and very friendly and brotherly with their excellencies, the governors. Okay, Ajulu, given the analysis Senator Tanega has given, let's look at the angle of financial discipline. If you follow history, you know very well that part of the reason why governors usurped the functions of local governments at the state level was in the area of financial misappropriations. Now, what do you make of financial discipline? For instance, a speaker of a state house of assembly or a judge who is supposed to chair the implementation of this money or disbursement of this money, percent over huge sums of money. What do you make about financial uh, discipline? Okay, let me quickly say that I wouldn't like to buy the agreement, agreement that because of the fear of financial uh, discipline. Not fear, but yes. in then, case of misappropriation. Yes, I don't think it would be because there is always a way the procedure that must be done. Particularly, what you should know is this. Most of all this, if we are talking of the House of Assemblies, they have their clerk, which seem to be the chief administrative officer that will even be the main controller and or when it comes to endorsing such. And even in the state, in state judiciary, you have the chief registrar, who is administrative officer. They are the chief administrative officer. And I believe these people have been so trained for you to be clerk or for you to be the chief registrar. And that is why you see that in each of the state's uh, assembly commission, they do have for you, there is a provision of how such clerk will be appointed and these are real administrators so we should not use use that as excuse to to do what is needful particularly what is constitutional it is constitutional the law is so clear section 121 subsection 3 talks about where the money will come from that any money that's entered that's within the consolidated uh, revenue fund shall be given to, if it is the House of, uh, if it's an assembly, shall be given to the head of that assembly. If it's judiciary, shall be given to judiciary. And I believe, and I'm sure, there's mechanism of how this will be disbursed, this will be used. So we should not use that excuse. I know some people, particularly governors, will always look for excuse because I remember I was in one, one for some times ago. Somebody raised that issue, said, K K K K K do you know that my, our laws are not trained? to disperse money, they are not administrators. I say, well, how, how dare you say that? When they have administrators, when they have chief accounting officer in all those things. And I believe we need to say, say this to clear. This is constitutional provision. Any deviation from this and is more or less a violation of that constitution. And when it comes to organs of government, I, I, I say this, and I do say this to me, I see more as treasonable offense that even should be one way or the other, an impeachment offense for any governor that tried to subvert that, that provision. It is so clear. The con Nigerian constitution talk of financial financial autonomy, that, that should be. As, as it is today, we thank the president, Muhammad Buhari, for even adding, adding voice and use his as, as, as power. 
to, 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 to add to that, then that is what should be. Any, any deviation, I wish the Assembly, the Speaker of Lagos State is saying that, is hearing this. Need to, they need to know what to do. The need to should be done immediately. I, recently, you see, when it comes to impeachment, they would be saying they, they are accusing the governor, deputy governor, for rearing goat or foul. That is not what should be. The read offense it's all right has been there for long but nobody has been doing that but i believe with this everybody will know where where because they're... i ask this question with the concern if you follow public opinion yeah. the worry is if this happens you know at the end of the month money is meant for salaries money is meant for overheads they divert them for other things in the name of autonomy or whatever how do we handle that? The, the, uh, that one, I believe, is a joint agreement. Because, like I said, the procedures, the, the procedures are already there. Each of these uh, the what arms of government, no, it, I don't think to not be but it, There must be a check and balances. And mind you, in each of those uh, organs, they have their own auditors. They are, they have their own accountant. They have their own chief administrative officer. Somebody must be responsible for that. And I believe all of them should 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 should, should be should be up to their to their duties. Okay, Shouldn't using be Lagos State as an example for the takeoff of this, how ready is the Lagos State? House of Assembly for the implementation of the Executive Order 10 in Lagos when we return after this report from Enugu. The law which is to be implemented in compliance with Section 12, Subsection 13 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, respondents say, is a round peg in a round hole. If you allow the institutions that practice democracy to practice it with, without hindrance, and therefore when you talk about financial autonomy, you are talking about one of the major ingredients that will make these institutions stand on their own and do what they are expected to do to advance democracy in Nigeria. I think that's a beautiful step in the right direction. That explains the necessity of each of the three organs of government to be autonomous to each other. And that will be in tandem with the constitutional democracy which Nigeria oppress. In some other quarters, however, there is a belief that Nigeria is not yet financially ripe for such autonomy of state legislatures and judiciary. It is a welcome development, but another question is, that's why this uh, executive order term, would they really grant them that autonomy? Would that be influenced, would that influence them from behind? So in the line of government that such autonomy will strengthen the institutions at the state tier of government and make them more independent and accountable according to the tenets of democracy. Some political analysts, however, insist on some level of checks and balances to guide against abuse. If you allow it to just remain like that, a lot of the governors may not be given to implementing it. So in furtherance of that power conferred on the president by that section 5 for the maintenance, the executive order became a very, very beautiful tool. Some of the ingredients of the presidential order 10 includes allocation of appropriation funds to the state legislatures and state judiciary in the state appropriation laws in the annual budget authorization of deduction from source of the Federation accounts allocation to states by the Accountant General of the Federation, among others. Thank you so much. And straight to Lagos, where the, the Speaker is joining us via Zoom. Mr. Speaker, I asked you earlier, you expressed excitement. The question now is, are the structures in place for this to take off fully in Lagos? Looking at what Ajulo said and Senator Itanen said. Yeah, very well. As I said earlier on, we have been practicing this for some time in Lagos, and the structures are there well established. So I don't think there's need for us to entertain any fear um, in respect of how would the such fund be handled. Like in Lagos, we have uh, Lagos State House of Assembly Service Commission. We have what we call Fund Management Committee. 
and as rightly observed by, um, I don't know, sorry, Mr. Ajitilo, we have the clerk of the house, who is the head of the administration. And we also have other staff. You have the auditors, you have the uh, accountants, you have procurement, you have all these in place. So I think the structure, the structures are there already well established. So there is no room for us to entertain anything. What we should do is to allow us to put this into practice. Well, fine, there might be, um, you know, kind of shortfall in utilizing the form as time goes on, but we will learn how to correct and adjust it accordingly. But I can't say the executive are perfect in the way I manage the behind fund of the state, but that does not mean we have to condemn them. So the same thing goes for other arms of government. We must allow them to come up with their own ideas as being enshrined in what the Constitution and other states' law. So this will give them ample opportunity to correct themselves where they have gotten it wrong. So what we are saying is that when you have a uh, service commission, which will be in charge of the um, promotion, you know, query and other things of the staffs of the House of Assembly. You have the procurement department, which we ensure that every um, approver uh, or contract, whatever it is, follow due process. And it has to pass through the auditor's office and the accountant. So this shows that definitely we will comply with all the established rules and laws, but saying because of what will happen or the manner they will handle the fund, then they should be fair. I don't think that is right. Because you cannot name unborn child. You have to allow the child to be given back to before start uh, thinking of the name, according to us in this part of the world. So all I'm saying in essence is that we have all it takes to handle this fund perfectly. I said we, be, we have been doing this in Lagos for the last uh, past 10 years. We have been on autonomy in Lagos State, though on um, running costs only, but of recent, we have joined the capital aspect of it. And there was also concern raised by the governor about the capital uh, project. What we are saying, we are not saying we are going to the state, main states, to construct road, to construct bridges. What we are saying, whatever structure that has to do with the parliament, we talk about their buildings, we talk about the road within the complex, you talk about the furniture, you talk about the effects, you talk about the computers and other things. These are things that are useful within the complex of the parliament. They should be given to the parliament to undo it perfectly. Because subjecting such to the control of the executive will definitely deprive the parliament the autonomy we are talking about. So I think we have all the structures in place. So it is for uh, the executive to allow the parliament to, you know, to uh put this into practice so as time goes on wherever we discover that there's shortcomings people will learn i mean the parliament will learn on how to manage it so we should not because of fear to say the uh, uh executive order should be uh, uh the parliament should be denied of the benefit of that executive. so i want to say all other states will also establish the same structure I know some of the state houses of assembly have established their own service commission and they also have the form management committee. So if we have others who have not done so, they will do that. In short while, we have the laws already. We can always share the laws, which we have done, and it was submitted to Mr. President last time when we visited, and also to the governor's forum. We have submitted the you know the uh, copies of what we all agreed on at the speaker's forum meeting. So I don't think there's reason for us to entertain anything. The structures are there, and we can easily comply with what the law says in terms of uh, uh, curing expenditure. Right, Honorable Muda Shiru, Speaker, Lagos State House of Assembly, thanks so much for your line of thought on Tuesday Live tonight. I, I can't get that. Can you just... I'm that saying thank you. you so much for being part of the program tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Really appreciate And back in Abuja, Ajuli, you heard what the Speaker, Lagos State of Assembly, said. They are ready. But if Lagos is ready, are other states ready? I want to believe that they are ready. I want to believe that for anybody to stand for election, to be, a, to be elected to, to represent his people, they, 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 and 
particularly with this uh, constitution, knowing fully where there, there will be financial autonomy. And apart from that, with the fundamentals, the indices, and the structure already in that arms of government, I believe they are ready. He mentioned the issue of Clark, and I'm sure that in both in the judiciary, the legislative, the legislative houses, and the executive, they have their procurement. This, this, this to be the same procurement sure. act, procurement law that we govern whatsoever money that will be disbursed. And again, the financial, the Nigerian financial law, that will be part of it. So I don't think we should, we should exercise well, anything. I, I, if we had all the time, I want to take you on the debacle of section 90, 92, 176, and 180 of the constitution, but I won't go there. Now, what does the law say as much as we have excitement in the air yeah. for maybe uh, a head of legislature head of judiciary who is in total violation of this act what does the law say has god we have it even that we that we will make it more because being, excitement could if, even there will be more, there will be there will be sanity in the sense that we have to know that the head of these two arms of government, they they have no, they, 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 there is no immunity for any for any criminal or whatsoever against them. So that means that they should have it at the back of their mind that any mistake, anything done, the arms of the law will be ready to 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 have it on them. Unlike where we have the chief executive of the state as the governor who has immunity. And even despite the immunity, we can see what, what has been happening. So that one is there. And apart from that, like I said, the law, the both financial law, when it comes to auditing, accounting, or even including procurement, will be part of what will be used to ensure that there is transparency and the money goes decide to go to where it's supposed to be. So I don't think we need to exercise fear. As long as our law is in the, they are in place at the all material material time will be used for anything and that's the essence of law the essence of law is to re regulate to guide human's conduct and i don't think we need to exercise that anybody using that i want to say is more like a genuine argument to ensure that this what the constitution has provided you will never get to the future let me ask you another question differently last word before i sign you off on this segment if you go to the headlines social media traditional media, print and what have you, you hear lawyers differ on executive order 10. What's your position? My position is so clear about this executive order. The executive order, like I said, going by the elephant, uh, the, the matter, the case I mentioned earlier, and from the section 5, a subsection 5.1 of Nigerian constitution that talked about executive power. It is part of the way Nigerian president, and mind you, this is the president of the federal federation, and the, and in in the in the case of Abia State, um, Attorney General of Abia State and Attorney General of of Federation really talked about federal location and who has such control. Since the president has the overriding control, being the president of Federation, he has such power to to make such order. Many people will tell you that he's been dictatorial. You have your own jurisdiction, which is federation. But the question is that why is where is federation? Both the Lagos, both the Ondo, all over is is that is the fed, that is his jurisdiction. And apart from that, the president is not making any new law. What the president is just trying to say is to invoke what the provision of the constitution, particularly section three of the third of the fourth amendment, that talks about that any money accruable to the to these two arms to these arms of government should be given to their heads. It is so clear. All the, what the president is saying is, this is the position of the constitution. I've sworn to uphold this constitution to ensure that the Nigerian law is to, to the best interest of, of, of Nigerians and to all manners of men. I will uphold this law. It is part of that oath that he took, that he took to now say, this is the position of the constitution. I'm invoking it. The president is not writing new law. He's not making new legal regime entirely. It's to say, this is the position of the law. So be it. Like I said, the issue of emancipation, when the Abraham Lincoln choose, choose to do that, he has the provision of the constitution that talks that all men must be treated equal. Okay. And that's why I do that. And the president too is now liberating Nigerian, Nigerian democracy by invoking that provision of the constitution to say there must be separation of power, there must be financial autonomy. If any lawyer choose to choose to disagree, you know, everybody they, they have their own. Opinion. Thank you so much, Kaude Ajula Mosse. 
I'll hold you here. Thank you. And I must thank you for your line of thoughts on this segment of the program. I'm grateful. Just thank nice you. having you. Thank you very much. That's it on this segment of the program. We looked at Executive Order 10. Senator Tainan participated on this segment. He's also guest on the next leg of the program. So we are not done yet with him. Stay with us. For now, the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, coughing into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. Coronavirus is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. Wash your hands regularly or sanitize your hands. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real. Oriented Innovation Talk Show. Thanks for staying tuned. On the second leg of the program, we we'll take a look at five years of President Muhammad Buhari's stewardship in Nigeria. Good governance is seen as a hallmark of democracy and translates to growth and advancement of the people. These many strongly believe in Nigerians have continued to enjoy especially in the last five years with achievements of the present administration. Top on the scorecard is infrastructure development, evident with massive road constructions, the railway and ongoing work at the Second Niger Bridge and other abandoned projects. The revamped agricultural sector with its value chain that hauled importation and saved the nation's millions of dollars is under area of progress by the present administration. Event watchers say people cannot forge, forget in a hurry, I beg your pardon, implemented, implementable policies and programs that helped in bringing Nigeria out of economic recession. Applauded by international bodies, more areas of achievements are with the social investment programs and intensified efforts in taking a hundred million Nigerians out of poverty over the next 10 years. There are much more gains with reforms in education, healthcare and water sanitation, the fight against corruption and insecurity not left out. It is said that the taste of the pudding lies in the eating and more so, pictures do not lie. Tonight, we'll bring you reports on developmental strikes from different states of the Federation after this background report put together by Joshua Ojito. Available statistics shows that the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari has made productive impact in almost all facets of Nigerian life. 
The three umbrella areas on which government based its intervention agenda are security, reviving the economy with particular emphasis on job creation, especially for youth, and fighting corruption. In the area of security, government has taken the battle to the insurgents and criminals and they are being extinguished by the day and very close to complete extermination. Similarly, the economy which was long dependent on the monoproduct petroleum is being retooled, refocused with diversification as a tax that must be accomplished. Agriculture has been given a boost. Manufacturing got a shot in the arm, and solid minerals are contributing a large chunk to the gross domestic product GDP. The country is very close to food security, with most of the grains no longer imported. It is important for us to appreciate a government that brings about policies that are productive, that are progressive, that are positive, that are proactive. On the war against corruption, there have been aggressive fiscal reforms and plugging of leakages in such a way that seems to say, commit the crime, do the term. Convictions have been had in that regard with respect to cyber crimes and, and corruption cases and so on and so forth have, have been on the high side. For features that have been made uh, uh, in this uh, regime is also um, uh, something of note. On road and rail infrastructure, a lot has been achieved with many projects completed while others are at various stages of completion. We are very happy, especially in the, in the administration of Muhammad Buhari, who has come and set a project here, this federal housing asset. It has bring many things for us, uh, developmental effort, especially that even the power KVH, who has been going to be established at our area, will bring people from other communities to set up here who will live here and bring the economy and other social uh, development too. Power, aviation, health and education sectors, among others, received adequate attention by government in the last five years. In Abuja, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. That report says the tone for the takeoff of the second leg of the program, which is five years of stewardship of 